This is a quick overview of CypherTrust Transparent Encryption. I'll start with the question is, what is CypherTrust Transparent Encryption? So fundamentally, CypherTrust Transparent Encryption is a security service for uh, controlling and encrypting data at rest. It sits at a layer in the system on a host where sensitive data or sensitive data files are being managed could be a file server, could be a database server, but fundamentally the system, the virtual machine, the physical host, has data in files, structured or unstructured, that needs access control encryption being applied to it. And so transparent, transparent encryption sits as a security vehicle in that layer. Quick architectural view, it looks like this. You have a host. Now this could be a physical or virtual machine, but it does have a, an operating system. So it's not a, a service or a pass or platform as a service. It is a virtual machine or physical machine that's running a, a guest OS, Linux or Windows. On that host, you have directory structures and somewhere within those directory structures, you have data that exists in files. And those files contain whatever sensitive information you've identified usernames, passwords, credit card numbers, health information, whatever it might be. And the, the, the goal is to encrypt and layer additional access control of that data, permitting only trusted users or trusted applications access to the data, while denying other bad actors or rogue use, such as ransomware or malware, or simply um, administrators or users who do not need to be granted directly access to those data files. This again, this could be database data files or it could be unstructured data files. The way you go about adding the additional security controls is you first install an agent on that host. That agent will be allowed to receive a key and policy from the central management co component, CypherTrust Manager. So what is it re actually receiving? Well, you create a security policy, and a policy is simply a definition of what users, what type of processes, and what kind of actions should be taking place on those files. And, and tied with that is a key. Right? So that is defined on the central management component, CypherTrust Manager. Then that entire policy gets pushed to the agent and the agent then applies that policy to the files. When it does that it creates what we call a guard point and a guard point is simply a point at which we're applying a policy and its rules to files and that means a directory or set of directories. So let me go through a, a bit of a demo for that. To start off with I have a Linux host and on that Linux host I have uh, some directory structures with some sensitive data in it. And if you notice, I'm, I'm going to be acting at the beginning as a, a privileged user. And eventually I'm going to want to block that guy, but for now... Let's just take a look at the data. So I have a set of directories and some sensitive data in them. We'll just take a quick look at some of that data. Nothing particularly interesting, right? It's just data. And right now it is in clear text. So let's go and look at CypherTrust Manager and how we can go about encrypting and controlling access to that data. So I'm going to go to Transparent Encryption and I've already installed and registered the agent. Alright, so I have an agent and it's installed on a client and that's the Linux node I was just in. And so now I'm going to start with creating a policy. Again, a policy is simply a set of rules and uh, with an associated key.
Give the policy a name. I'm going to be using one of our uh, features called Live Data Transform, which allows me to generate and rotate keys automatically. Um, so the policy has a set of security rules. If I choose Live Data Transform, I'll automatically get this first rule, but I'm going to ignore that rule for now. I'm going to add some additional security rules. For now, I'm going to simply add permit and apply key. I'm going to add that rule. I'm going to add one additional rule, which is just deny an audit. And I'm going to cover these in a little more detail. So I know this policy has three rules. Rule number one is just rekeying operations. So we can ignore that from now. That's only for key rotation. But rule number two and rule number three, which are these last two, we can read this rule as um, blank means all. So it says for every resource set. That means file or directory within the guard point. For every user, for every process, for every action, actions are kind of IOs, we're going to permit and apply a key. So rule number two really is wide open at the moment. Um, if rules are evaluated in order. Once a rule is met, then we trigger that rules effect and we don't process rules any further. If, I, if rule number two is not met, then it would go to rule number three. And rule number three says for every file, for every user, for every process, for every action, then we would deny and audit the event. If no rule is met, then the default behavior is to deny. So I always have this last rule in any rule, any policy I create. Um, so I can also, I'll capture an event called, uh, we'll capture an event, an audit record of the deny. But for now, we'll leave it wide open just as a, uh, an example. I want to create a key. I need a key role to apply, but I'm going to create a key when I do this. So I'm going to specify that the data is currently in clear text. That's what clear key represents. And then from after it's encrypted or to encrypt the data, I need to create a new key. We'll call it. My test key, and it is a AS256 bit key, so it is a symmetric key. This key value is not known to anybody. It's simply a name under the covers, and we take you know great lengths to make sure this key is secure. All right. So here's the overall policy definition. I've got a set of rules. They don't do a whole lot at the moment. Um, but it will encrypt the data and it will automatically, since I'm using LDT, to transform the data from clear text into the new key, which is an AS256 bit key. All right, so now I have a key in policy. I'm going to go apply that to my host. And this is that Linux node that I was, I'm working on. So I'm going to create a guard point. Again, a guard point is a point at which I'm applying the security rules with the associated key. I'm going to select my policy. And then I'm going to browse the, rem the directory structure of, th of that node, Linux, that Linux node 1. So I'm probing the Linux node 1 saying, would you list out the directories for me? Um, I could have just typed them in. I don't have to do the browse, but this makes it for conven convenient to, to select the right directory. So I choose that private directory. All right, so this is the directory I'm going to protect. This is what this is my guard point. All right, and I've successfully created the guard point. And it has to do a few things in the background, but this will take place automatically. I'm going to refresh this a few times. Now, as you can see, um, after a few refreshes, it goes active, and the rekeying process kicks off. And when this process is finished, um, the data is going to be all encrypted. Now, I don't have have to wait for the rekey to finish. Um, I can immediately go out there and start working with the data. But we're not talking about a whole lot of data, so it was it was very quick. So now the data is rekeyed. And let's go take a look at the data. So 
Just a quick command to look at the status of the guard point. So my guard point is slash private. My configured state is guarded and the status is guarded, which is exactly what the GUI tells me. Now I didn't have any restrictions, so I can see the data. in clear text. But under the covers this data is encrypted. So let's go change that policy and let's change this up and we're going to say that we're going to have a specific user. I'm going to call this user super user. Actually, the, the user set I should say user set is called super user. But inside this set, we're going to add a user. I can browse. In this case, I can browse the agent to help me select which user to choose from. And again, these could be local users or they could be LDAP or Active Directory users. In this case, I'm going to choose the local, which is the system. And I could do it by group as well. Hi. And now I'm simply enumerating the users on that host to choose from. And there should be a user called super user. And there is. Again, this could be by group or it could be Active Directory user or group. All right. In this case, this local user, I'm going to grant access. So now my user set which contains one user called super user is going to get full access. Now if you read the, the policy, rule number one is just for rekeying of data so we could ignore that one. Rule number two is if you are super user per the set, you're permitted all operations and you're going to you know, apply the key. So you're going to encrypt writes and decrypt reads and super user will have no idea. If you're not super user, then rule number three is what's going to be met, which is to deny everything else, including root. So now let's go back out there and see the behavior. See, I no longer have access to the directory at all because I'm not permitted to any access to any file in the guard point or any in, into the guard point it, itself nor can I have access to the files in the guard point so root is blocked but now let me log in as super user Super user gets access to the data. And the and, whoops, and the data is in the clear. Whoops. I can type. So super user can see the data, but root cannot. So we can do let's go back to super user. Or excuse me, let's go back to root, so I'm root. And I can assume super user's identity. And by default, we understand this behavior, and you're still denied. So you actually have to be super user, which means you have to log in as the super user account to gain access. Right. And so that's the basic over, overview of how this works. Now, I only granted it based on individual, but you could do it by group, or you could say the only thing that can access this data is a specific process, such as a database process like SQL Server or DB2, or maybe you have an application that processes some type of data information, and you only want to trust that application to have access to the data. That's also equally true. It would just be a matter of updating the policy to use process 
as opposed to you know, focusing on user. Anyway, that's the overview of, of what the uh, transparent encryption does.